All right, guys, Coach Jamie here. We're going to talk about 10 golden rules of playing defense. While specific defensive situations call for specific tactics, these are sort of overall rules that we as defensemen should learn to live by. Number one, good defense doesn't mean that you have to get the puck off the other team. It's great to steal the puck if you can, but a lot of times doing that puts you at risk of blowing the play if you miss. It's a win to take away a passing or shooting option. In this case, we have a defenseman here. He could go after this forward and try and steal the puck, but if he misses, he's going to be liable to let up a shot or a pass for a backdoor tap. And in this case, maybe it's smarter to just stay in between, take the shooting option away, take the backdoor uh, pass option away, and force this guy to make a pass to a less dangerous spot up to the point. It's a win to push a shooter to a bad low percentage shooting angle. In this case, we have a forward coming 1v1 on the D. This D could hop up and try and steal that puck, but if he misses, forward's probably on a breakaway. Again, it's a win for this defenseman to back up, push this forward wide to a low percentage shooting angle. I have a uh, box control video that kind of describes how that, that works too, pushing the guy wide, how it makes it less likely for him to score. And it's a, w a win to tie man up until you can get some help. In this case, we've got a forward in the corner, corner with the puck. This defenseman can just keep him at bay until his winger come, come in and help him out. Rule number two, stay on the right side of the puck. As we said, number one, sometimes going to steal the puck puts you at risk. As a defenseman, we always need to stay on the right side of the puck. What this means is stay between the puck and the net. Like our example from before, we have a 1v1 coming down, a forward versus a defenseman. If this defenseman decides he wants to step up and he misses the puck, now this forward gets past him. And then this forward is now on the wrong side of the defenseman. He's between the defenseman and the goalie. This defenseman is on the wrong side of the puck. Another way to say this is that we generally want to receive the rush as a defenseman, not attack the rush. Sit back, drift backwards, let that rush come to you. If you attack the rush, you get one chance to win. And if you miss, you're dead. Keep backing up and you have multiple chances to receive the rush and play proper defense. Again, if we receive the rush, not attack the rush, and we stay on the right side of the puck, that means between the puck area and the net, we can push the guy wide to a low percentage shooting angle like we talked about in the last one. Another illustration is the uh, forward has the puck in the corner. This defenseman wants to go attack that forward. If he over pursues and follows this route and comes after this forward, he all of a sudden has the forward on the wrong side of him. He's got he's on the wrong side of the puck. He's no longer between the forward and the net. And this forward has a free, a free and easy path to the net. So we always want to stay between the forward and the net, stay on the right side of the puck. In this case, staying on the right side of the puck is this forward kind of jitterbugs back and forth, maybe stick yelling. This defenseman has to jitterbug and mirror his, his movement back and forth. This is where your free hand comes in handy. Use your stick to uh, contain him on one side. Use your free hand to contain him on the other side and just keep him at bay. That's how you stay on the right side of the puck. All right, rule number three, no one gets behind you. You have to keep your head on a swivel and be aware of where all the attackers are and make sure that no one gets, you, gets behind you at any point. In this case, uh, we're in the offensive zone. Let's uh, say this is uh, you're the defenseman and this is your D partner. You have to watch out for forwards. Uh, you might get this guy kind of come out and sneak behind you a little bit here and start calling for that head man pass. Maybe he comes off the bench on a line change and he's behind you. Or maybe he comes out of the penalty box. You always got to keep aware of what's behind you. Make sure nobody's behind you. If somebody's back here, you're going to have to back out and stay with them, but nobody gets behind you. Back in our defensive zone here, this is uh, your goalie. Here's you, the lonely defenseman. Some other uh, opponents working around you here. You've got your guy tied up in front of the net. You're doing a great job, but unbeknownst to you because your head isn't on a swivel, this forward sneaking in the back door. All of a sudden, somebody can get the puck over and get a pass, tap this in the back door because you didn't have your head on a swivel. You weren't watching what was going on, and you let a man get behind you to a dangerous area. All right, number four, you and your other defensemen are partners. Work as a team. Imagine you and your partner are connected by an invisible string, and most of the time, you move together. In the defensive zone, when one goes to the corner, the other comes to the net. When play reverses, the string pulls back. In this case, the puck's in the corner. This defenseman's chasing the puck. This guy's covering the net. When that puck reverses and comes this way, this defenseman's going to come to the corner. That imaginary string is going to pull this defenseman over this way. Play reverses again to the other side. The defenseman goes to the puck. The imaginary string pulls this guy. In the offensive zone, we're in the offensive zone on this side of the ice now. Puck's on this side. This defenseman should be relatively close to the boards. His partner should be uh, roughly at the center of the width of the ice. Same as kind of the other with, uh, way we described in the defensive zone. The puck comes around. This defenseman is going to go over and start covering the boards. The imaginary string pulls his partner over. Puck goes around the other way. 
Let's say it only goes part way. This guy should probably be coming about even with the puck, but the imaginary string is going to pull his defensive partner with him. You need to communicate to work together. You're each other's best source of information, and by communicating, it makes life easier for both of you. You need to give each other options and outlets when you're under pressure or your partner is your best source of help. Back in our defensive zone, we have uh, our, our partner's being pressured. He's got a forward on him. Once again, you're giving him an outlet. You're, he's under pressure. Give him an outlet, slide back, and, and he can make a D-to-D -D bank pass over to you. In this case, we're in a regroup situation. Puck just came back to this defenseman. He's got a winger from the other team pressuring him. Both him and his partner skating backwards together, so they're giving each other an outlet. In this case, this gentleman's under pressure. He can just slide a pass over to his partner, gets him out of trouble, and now we can regroup and go the other way. Another very similar situation, we're in the offensive zone. These defensemen are at the point. This defenseman has the puck. He's getting pressured by their team's winger. He has a partner that's giving him an outlet, and he makes an easy pass over D to D and gets the pressure off himself. I have another video on defensive breakout calls to give you some communication tools that you can use, terms that you can use for breakouts that everybody will understand. I would include your goalie as part of your three-man defensive team. Communicate with each other and don't be shy cheering your goalie after a big save or taking responsibility when your team lets one in. Telling your goalie, sorry, that was my fault I didn't cover that guy, can go a long way to making your, your goalie feel appreciated and making a stronger defensive unit. Number five, defense requires smart players who are great skaters. I have people tell me, my kid isn't the best skater, but he just loves to hit. I think he'd be great on defense. That offends me on the first level because defensemen need to be able to skate as fast backwards as the opponent's fastest skater can skate forwards, and to be able to transition seamlessly. If you want to be a great defenseman, you need to take your skating seriously. Watch Kale McCarr or Chris Letang and tell me elite defensemen aren't elite skaters. This offends me on the second level because the implication is defensemen are just dumb cavemen running around hitting people. As I make this video out of the top 10 hitters in the NHL, only two are defensemen and only one of the top six. Defensemen cannot run around the ice with reckless abandon just hitting whatever they can. Defensemen really need to be the most cerebral players, constantly surveying the ice, identifying threats and options, and ranking those threats and options. At any given moment, you must defend the greatest threat and know the best option to get the puck to the safest area that you can. Number six, watch their chest with split vision. Danglers will try to fool you to beat you with head fakes, puck movement, shoulder fakes, footwork, eye movement, stick movement, Blade, it, blade angle. You name it, they'll try it. The way to defeat that is to have split vision. Primarily watch an attacker's chest. It never lies, and where the chest goes, the body goes. And where the body goes, the puck will be with it. Split vision means while watching their chest, keep the puck in your peripheral vision so you can still poke check or go stick on puck. If you watch their chest and stay on the right side of the puck, they will literally need to try to go through you to get to the net. And that is where you get the opportunity to hit them or separate them from the puck. If you just watch the puck, you'll be watching their backs as they deke your poor goalie as they head down the ice past you. Number seven, stick on ice. This is so simple, but you have to play with your stick on the ice as much as possible. Stick on ice increases your reach and consequently your defensive radius. This example, I have two defensemen drawn here. This guy theoretically has a stick up in the air. It's not on the ice. His radius of what he can defend is basically just his body. This defenseman on the other hand has his stick out on the ice. He can move his stick, and his blade is going to kind of cover the uh, circumference of the circle. So this whole shaded area is the radius that he can defend. Look how much larger it is than the defenseman who doesn't have a stick on the ice. Stick on ice also gives your teammates a passing target. In this case, I threw it forward out here. If he's going to pass to this defenseman, where does he put the puck? Is this guy righty? Is he lefty? Where do we want the puck at? We throw it here? Do we throw it there? Do we throw it here? Who knows, right? This defenseman has a stick out. His blade is on the ice. This forward knows. I'm going to put the puck right there at the plate of the stick. So give your teammates a passing target. Stick on puck disrupts passing lanes. Again, we've, I've got uh, two defensemen playing our defensive zone. I've got uh, four forwards here. Maybe we're on a, uh, I don't know, there's, there's four forwards attacking us here. And uh, they've got their sticks out. Defensemen got their sticks out, and their uh, defending radius is shown here. Look at all these passing lanes that coincide. They're going through the the area that the defensemen are able to defend there. So getting your stick out and being able to get an active stick disrupts all the passing lanes. Stick on ice impedes players from going where they want. In this case, we've got a one-on-one uh, -on -one coming down. This defenseman has a stick angled to the inside. He's giving this forward a visual cue that he cannot go this way. Subconsciously, this forward will be pushed to go to the outside. He can't go where he wants. He, his mind's telling him he won't be able to go that way anyways. 
So we're using that stick on the ice to push this guy to the outside. If that defenseman stick is up on the air, up in the air, or up to his side or something like that, we're not going to get the same benefit out of it. So stick on ice enables you to get a stick on puck as well, which is our next topic. Number eight, stick on puck. One of the most unused, underrated tools in the defenseman's arsenal is stick on puck. When an attacker cocks his hands to pass or shoot and you have your stick on the ice, you reach your stick out towards the puck onto their blade. I've got a good picture of uh, Chris Letang going stick on puck. You will cause an errant shot, an errant pass, or a turnover. There's a video online of NHL Hall of Famer Scott Stevens talking about the importance on stick of, of stick on puck and how it took him years in the NHL before he finally learned it. I'll put a link to that video in the comment section. Please watch it. This is so easy, uh, such an easy way to make you a, great, a better defenseman. In this case, uh, my little illustration here, I've got a forward coming down. As he's going to shoot, this defenseman's putting his stick out, going stick on puck. Number nine, don't reach too far. With all this talk of stick on ice and stick on puck, whether we're putting our stick out to disrupt passing lanes, steer attackers to the outside, poke checking, going stick on puck, we don't want to overreach. When you overreach, you throw yourself off balance and you stop moving your feet, both of which are recipes for disaster. Keep your true reach a secret from your opponent. Stay under control. And you'll be able to accept the rush, poke check multiple times, and still keep your balance and be able to maneuver. Poke check like a snake attacks. Keep your stick in hiding. Uh, keep your reach a secret and keep your intentions a secret. Then unleash a quick, controlled poke, then retract right back in like a snake would. Number 10. Protect the dangerous areas. Give them the non-dangerous areas. Defending the rush, the center of the ice is the most dangerous, so we want to defend that area. That's this hatched area uh, in between the dots here, between the dots and the net. So we keep the center of the ice, we keep the center of the ice between the dots, and we give them the outside, and we use our body position and our stick to dictate that. So again, we're going to occupy this space, and we're going to get our sticks in the lane here and give them a subconscious uh, little mental push that they're going to take the puck to the outside. We keep the good ice, we give them the bad ice. In the D zone, the majority of goals are scored from the house. That's our hatched area here between uh, between the, the uh, circles and the net. So we want to protect that dangerous area above all else. So we give them a perimeter. For example, on the PK, we let them move the puck around the perimeter, and we use our sticks and ice sticks on ice to discourage them from passing into the house and deflect passes if they try. So we're going to occupy this space and defend this space and try to keep any passes from going through. Uh, Somebody was trying to make a pass through here. We'll get our stick on it and get it out of there with our stick on the ice. So that's 10 golden rules of playing defense that will help you play better defense. And that's smart hockey, and that's what we want to see from you guys.